Information is power and only the artistic minds can bring it out and in the most creative way. My name is Martin Mumo Mutiso. Join me in this journey of bringing you the most captivating, thrilling, serious exchange of gunfire between the soldiers that were supporting the government and entertaining interviews. Guys, you won't believe it today, it's happening. Vice Chancellor Dongo invited you to come with me and I'm going to be shooting him. He's going to be talking about real stuff, real life, and we're going to hang out with him for the next one hour or so. A beautiful morning, Kenya. A beautiful morning, Rongo University. Welcome to the fiesta. The show continues, and today we will be hosting one of the amazing men in Kenya, one of the most hardworking industrials and... Uh, one of the best vice chancellors in Kenya, and this is the vice chancellor Rongo University. This man has been in university since 1979. The only time he has not been in university is two years. Let's talk to Professor Samuel Gudu. Thank you so much. Welcome to this show, Pro. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to be here at your place. Yeah. It's not a, an opportunity everyone gets, yeah. and we feel so humbled for that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so. Prof, I want us to talk about some real stories in your life. And uh, from 1979 to 1985, University of Nairobi, no laptops, no internet, no phones. Tell me about that. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Mutiso. I'm glad that uh, you are keen to know a bit of uh, <laughs> how some of us have walked the rough, yeah. the rough path to where we are today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, I joined the University of Nairobi in 1979 as a first-year student, uh, admitted to School of Agriculture to yeah. take BSc Agriculture. Yes. And that time, as you say, there were no phones, there were no computers were there. There was one computer hey. at Chiromo campus, <laughs> one huge frame, almost the size of this building. Yes. And as students, we were only allowed to go and stand and watch computer at a distance and it was only the keyboard which was brought out for us to <laughs> to press and if you press you see something on the screen yes and that was almost like an introductory uh, learning to computer yes and that was it for the four years for the four years we never wow. we never now did anything even when i came back for masters mm. uh, in in 83 yes it was still the same thing, but now we had got a little more information on the computer, but we had no opportunity to print, to write anything on the computer. We, we were only guided by the technical stuff on, this is called the keyboard, this is the, the main frame was the motherboard, which was too big, you can't even see the whole of it. Yes. And that was it. And at that time, did you feel like it's normal to you that we have no computers? Exactly normal, because there were no computers, so we had got nothing to compare where we were <laughs> with anything else. <laughs> yes. So, what happened is that uh, for us, you, you have to write very well at yes. that time. You have to write a good handwriting because everything else you are doing was handwritten. If you're paperwork, doing, term papers, paperwork, assignments. All that. Wow. You, you had to write by hand and write it neatly. Project by pen. Everything by pen. Oh. And the whole of undergraduate, it was by pen. And we finished. And the lecturers had to go through all those <laughs> handwritings. <laughs> hey, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Who, who among these can write well and is making a lot of sense. Yes. That's how we went through yes. a four-year program, I mean a three-year program, which was very, very intensive. Yes. And uh, everything, as I said, is by hand. There is no telephone, there is no computer for anybody to do anything. But there was a lot of... Um, a lot of support yes because uh, the university had got quite some reading materials so you had to go to the library sort out things as required and then produce what you have to submit so as research an assignment. was all over in the library yes there was quite a lot of work in the library but okay. as agriculturalists we were doing a lot of work in the field also yeah, sure. so each student had got some small plot where you are learning how to plant how to weed and just like that. you've heard professor gudu did his project using pen 
from page one to the last page. And you're about to talk about the hardest time you ever had in the University of Nairobi. This is the degree, the, the undergraduate. I think the undergraduate um, was, was, was hard. Yes. But uh, I would say for me, the academic part was not that difficult mm -hmm. because I think I picked a program I liked and therefore I didn't have much difficulty in going through academic yeah, sure. part of it. Mm. The most difficult part, I would say, in undergraduate mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, by the time you, uh, that was the, the, that was like uh, being away from parents. Yes, yes. Being away from parents for a period of time. And uh, there were also social aspects of life. Yeah, this is the first time you are you, you are given. We were given what we called boom. Yes, that was uh, money which was given to all. And how students. much was it? Oh, boom was six hundred shillings. In six hundred shillings per, 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 per term. Oh, six hundred, and it was a lot of money. <laughs> I I even bought a, re, a record player. You know, students like music. So yes. I bought record player, and of yes. course, it was in my room. My colleague also had got his. <laughs> 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 and how much did it cost you? 120. So from 600, you just yeah, used I, 120. And I still remained with a lot of money to spend, <laughs> to send to my other siblings, yes. because uh, I'm the second born in our family. Okay. And okay. we were both with my elder brother at the university. Him he was at KU, me mm. I was at University of Nairobi. Yes. And therefore, the little money we were getting we were also to support our mom. Yes. Uh, back home because our father died when I was still very young. Okay. Yeah. All the way from the village yes. to the capital. Yes. We are in Nairobi. Nairobi yes. University is at the center yes. of the capital city. Yes. Disco, drugs, girls. What happened? All of it. And that is the social life that I, I think I was talking about that uh, <clears throat> immediately we went. The first time we were all okay. Yes. We were good friends. <laughs> the second semester some people have learned where there is girls, yes. drinks, all all manners of things. Mm. And then things start separating out. And for me, the social aspect of life was not, was not again, so traumatizing because mm. uh, I, I was brought up in a Christian family okay. background. So when my colleagues were going to drink, I was going to church. Oh. I was going to church for, you know, CU, yes. Christian Union. And... Uh, uh, what was surprising is when you go out with, with with friends, which I could not avoid. Yes. But when you are together with them, you are drinking your soda. They are drinking the other drink. <laughs> and when you walk out a little, you come and find they have they already have adjusted a bit there. of your <laughs> of mm. your drink. And then I asked myself whether that is the kind of life I would want. Those those are the kind of friends I would want to keep around. Of course, slowly we parted ways because yeah. you come now to know that. My social life is going this way. I don't want to join this group because they're taking me to where I'm not so comfortable. So what did you used to do with your free time? Probably let's talk about your talent or your skill that you used to engage yourself in. I, I was a very good footballer. Oh, oh yes. I was really? a very good footballer. I, I, I represented it. everywhere where I went. I played in the, in, in the first team football. Football? Football. Your favorite football yeah. uh, team in Kenya is? Ah, yes, Gormahia. Gormahia. Yes, Gormahia. And those days they used to... <laughs> and those days we used to go and, and dance and sing and... and, 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 and uh, Can you remember them. those chants? Oh, yes. Oduo Cobra and the other one. Oduo Cobra, can you give yes. us that? Yes, yes. Ochola, Ochola Juakali. Yes. Those, those days, eh? <laughs> they were... Oluwach Jogo. Yeah. Onyango Jogo. So, we were great fans of mm -hmm. Gormahia. And, and so... Uh, that, that kept me going in terms mm -hmm. of social life. Yes. And again, we had also a very nice, uh, a very nice music, which we were singing ourselves in the church in mm. the Christian Union. Yes. So that tended to help me, sealed me out of some of the negativities of okay, social life. Okay, okay. Yeah. And in the four years before we moved to Masters, mm. have you ever found yourself in compromising situations, maybe security, maybe in discipline here and there? The one I remember vividly was we went to we, we went to socialize. We were just walking in <laughs> Nairobi doing window shopping at night. Yes, it was almost around around seven thirty in uh, p.m. Around seven thirty, we walked all the way 
we reached around Hilton, mm -hmm. and then we said now we walk back to University of Nairobi, which we did. Yes. But on the way, we had not known that uh, we had not known that the place we were walking close to yes. was uh, Nyati House. Yes, Nyati I, House. I know most of you know Nyati House uh -huh. and who are in there. Yes. And we were ordered to stop and lie down. Mm. And we didn't know for what. So we started arguing like university students always want to know everything, <laughs> including the one that may not be necessary. Yes. So we asked, why are we lying down and what have we done? And then we saw that guy cock a gun. Yes. And ordered us to lie down. We did. And now is when we started trembling. You know you can die. Yes. That is when you remember yes. Comrade Power. Yes, no, Comrade Power now has even disappeared because <laughs> you are down. <laughs> yes. Then this guy continued asking, where are you from? Mm. We said we were just walking in the streets and we were university students. We were just going back. Mm. He took a few seconds and told us, up. Yes. We woke up and told us to disappear in the next one minute. <laughs> And I can assure you, most of us arrived without shoes. <laughs> yes, running <laughs> at, seriously at, 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 at the hostel. Mm. So that was one more compromising situation. But mm. the worst one, yes, is when uh, there was attempted coup. Because that you is remember 1982. 1982. Yes, that attempted coup, we had travelled because uh, students was university. Of, uh, I mean, the students who were doing agriculture. Mm -hmm would take one year in university uh, in Nairobi, uh -huh. but then the other two years in Kabete. Okay. So okay. some colleague of mine whom I had known many years back when we were in high school, mm. uh, the late Titus Adungosi, I think some of you might have heard Titus Adungosi. You, may, you might not have heard it. Mm. He finally died. He stayed in prison for a long time, but oh. he was with my elder brother at, at Agorosari when they were doing A-level. Yes. So I used to visit him, my brother, and then they were friends, so I would see. So when we were now at the university th that fateful day, yes. Adungosi came to Kabete and he knew me. So he came and told me that, uh, you know, the government has been toppled and uh, people need to go. But he had got more friends in there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. So we all jumped into a bus going to celebrate the government has been toppled. <laughs> we ran, before we reach now the roundabout, you remember the, the, there is now the casino, the yes, international casino, which is now not there. Mm -hmm. We met fierce soldiers who told us to lie down. And we all laid down on the University of Nairobi field. Yes. Where we were lying down there, there was serious exchange of gunfire between the soldiers that were supporting the government, the government that had come now to take over the station because the station had already been taken over by by the rebels. Yes, yes. So they were coming to take over. So ordering us to lie down was meant to save us because we were going to pass through the crossfire between University of Nairobi and the VOK. Yes, yes. We were ordered to lie down and we laid down there for almost uh, almost 10, 20 minutes with a gunfire which was almost, and you, you, we thought you were dead where you were. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Until the gunfire died down. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what was happening because to us, university students, you go because others are going. We didn't even know. I don't sure, know you don't that. think. The government has been toppled, so we were going to celebrate. We didn't even know what we were going to celebrate. Mm. And that now was the beginning of our my problem and our problem from Kabete. Mm. By the time the soldiers realized that now we are safe, they ordered us to go back to where we came from. Mm -hmm. And remember, the bus now can't go. Yes. And we have to run on foot from main campus, yes. University of Nairobi, to Kabete. Yes. Very far. And you still have the dilemma of the crossfire. We didn't even now, you know, you are confused. Mm. Even the ones you know, now you can't even talk to him. Everybody <laughs> now to him or herself. Yes. And we had got ladies, gentlemen. I tell you that to me was the biggest challenge of my life because we ran. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when you are scared and you are running, something like a suit comes out <laughs> automatically. Yeah. So you realize you are going on foot. You are just running. Yes, and when we reached Kabete, mm. we found GSU has filled the whole compound. Mm -hmm and told us the university has been closed, you must go home. Wow. You have no money, you have no bags, nothing. You left with the bus. You left with the bus, you left your things in the room, yes. and you are now ordered to go home. Yes. And you don't know where to go. Wow. 
You don't know where to go. I'm really sorry about that. 1982 goes down in the books of history, yeah. having been one of the most traumatizing moments for Professor Samuel Gudu. Yeah. And now we want to move quickly and look at how did you move to masters? Huh? I worked with the government after finishing in 83. We should have finished in 82, but because of coup, we finished a year later. Yes. Then I worked with the government Ministry of Agriculture. I was posted in Pekera, Baringo. Mm -hmm. I worked there for, I think, about four or five months. Yes. Then I was given scholarship to go back to University of Nairobi. For your and, master's? Uh, for my master's in mm -hmm. genetics and plant breeding. Yes. yes. Can you just mention a few of your alumni friends? Oh, many. The current VC of Masindemu Lira. Wow. Uh, we had got, uh, I have got, uh, uh, we have uh, Professor uh, Agong. Professor Agong. Professor Agong was behind us, I think, one or two years, who is the current VC uh, used. Wow, wow. And then uh, we have got, I have got several of my colleagues. Mm -hmm. I think there was very senior people in the government in terms of uh, Ministry of Agriculture. And then you did your master's? I did my master's. Completed? I, I finished my master's very quickly and I was recruited in University of Nairobi as graduate assistant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From 1985, I finished master's in 85 and in 80, I, I worked there at University of Nairobi as a GA yes. up to 19, up to end of 86. And then I was moved, we were, we were selected and moved to Moe University to, Moe University was started in 1985. Yeah, okay, okay. By 85, when I finished, I was teaching in Moe University as a GA. Uh, teaching uh, undergraduate. Yes. But I'd finished my master's. And then we were selected to go and remain in Moi University mm. to stabilize the, the young university. So you are one of the pioneers in Moi University? Uh, uh, yes, I would call myself one of the pioneers because I started teaching 85 when it was just started. Yes. But I was still an employee of University of Nairobi. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, you can hear that. Uh, Mr. Oh, Professor Samuel Goodwin is one of the pioneers at uh, Moi University, which is the mother university of Rongo University College before we got our charter to become Rongo University. Right. And now you are in Moi LD, and uh, things are moving, things are moving, and soon you're going to Canada. Yes. Where you go for your doctorate? And then I, I we applied for a government sponsorship. Mm -hmm. to advertise in the papers. You love books. Yes, I would. I like. I like knowing a little moment. more than what I don't know. Okay. I, I am very inquisitive in terms of uh, knowledge. Yes. So I applied. I was. I applied two places. I was called in University of Cambridge. Yes. yes. To go and do masters. I mean, PhD in genetics and plant breeding. Mm -hmm. And I was called in uh, uh, University of Guelph in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I opted to go to University of Guelph in Canada because they were doing PhD with coursework. Okay. In Cambridge, they were doing PhD with research, but I still needed to learn a little more. And I was oh. changing from just pure genetics and plant breeding to molecular biology. So mm. I decided to go to Canada and do a bit of coursework. Yes. So we went through the coursework and then uh, finished my PhD in 1993. At that time, the government is sponsoring everything. Everything. Flight. I was completely on full scholarship, and I think one of the best scholarships, I thank the Kenya government for it, because uh, I was on a scholarship which allows me to come back home every oh. year. At the end of every year, I must come back home for one or two months, then I go back. How many years did you take in Canada? About about four and a half to five years. I went in 88 and, and came back in uh, four years February 20, Wow, for doctorate, completely, yeah, four years. not completely, nothing else. Nothing else. Coursework, very rigorous coursework and uh, very rigorous research work. Did you fail in between? N nowhere. So you leave JKIA? Yes. Canada? The, fir the first flight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the first flight. Yes. <laughs> Across we flew to <laughs> Heathrow mm -hmm. Airport in England, England. And then from England we flew straight to Canada and landed in, in, in uh, Canada. How were things? How did you perceive the country ah, there at that time? It, it, was, it was good. When we landed in Canada, we landed in Canada in August. And uh, before we started our program, we used to play football and, yes. and do other things. Mm -hmm. And I think one more thing that shocked me most is uh, as a new student in Canada, when it reached September, because mm. we went in August. Yes. We went to play soccer a little far away from the university. But we had been warned that winters in Canada are serious and mm. they come in abruptly. 
the following evening, we had been warned that winter will be setting in, but mm. to us, I had never gone through winter. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so we went to play our soccer as usual. Yes. Only to a distance from here to town, we were almost dying. Because Serious. temperatures had just come down so drastically. No gloves, nothing, almost bare-chested with a, a, a t-shirt. Wow. We almost died. Prof, you mean you were playing died. football even in Canada? Yes, I did. I did. That was one one of the things that kept me, uh, you know, active. Yes, I mean, yeah. So, okay. And we almost died. The temperatures came. You you breathe. You just feel like your chest is bursting. Mm. And things were different in uh, that country. By of the time we reached there, we were just rushed to the hospital because it was it was bad. Are you serious? Yes, it was that bad. Winter is terrible. I think Odol might tell you what wow, it is. Wow, it is terrible. Wow. We, because well, if, if the distance were to increase another maybe half a kilometer, half a kilometer. we would have just dropped down. And, <laughs> and people on the roadside, by the roadside, yeah, you know, uh, them, they don't are care. Properly, they, no, they, them, they understand what winter is and they are properly dressed. So they assume you are ignoring. No, they were sympathizing with us, but there's nothing they can do. <laughs> because they, they can't bring, give you the only one. They also have to protect themselves. Yes. So by that we learned, you know, the the experience that taught us what winter is all about. And then a few days later, now that evening snow started falling. You want to know what snow is all about because mm -hmm. we had never seen snow. Mm -hmm. And later on, now ice, uh, it, it's terrible. Okay. So that was really baptism with fire in, <laughs> in terms of winter. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> In Canada, you find a new life, yeah. you find new cultures, you find a lot of maybe improved technology compared to home, yeah. and now you have to kind of adapt, yeah. to adapt to that new life. Yeah, <clears throat> that, that's, that's right. It, adapting in new culture is difficult. Mm. Because, uh, you know, here we greet each other, even the people you don't know, you say hi. <laughs> then you go to that culture and you find you, nobody is so happy to greet you. Or even if you greet, sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. Mm. <clears throat> and sometimes uh, you are going to meet somebody is walking and when he sees you're black, they take a different route. Okay. So they leave that for you and you start wondering, hey, why is that guy, you know? So the cultures are different. When you go to lift, you are in the lift, and sometimes they come out of the, somebody comes out of the lift to allow you to go. They wait for the next, hey. the next round. You know those little little things start telling you you are in, you are you are not in your country. Yeah. And uh, when you go to church, I used to go to church there. I went to church throughout, but you are the only black, and everybody in that church mm. is is looking at you. You know you you seem like you have done a mistake mm. by going to church. Yes. So the cultures were different. And the cultures of time, you know, for them, the lectures start on time and it is just that. Mm -hmm. If you're about five, four minutes late, you find the door has been locked. Uh, so little, little things tell you you are definitely in a different culture. Mm -hmm. The kind of foods, there was no ugali. Uh, the kind of foods we eat here. There was the no omena. Omena is not there. Samaki is there, salmon, I mean, but salmon, but it is so expensive. Mm. So you have to now start to look for what to eat. And here at the university and at home, people are cooking for you, but now you have to cook for yourself. Mm. You have never known how to cook. <laughs> you, are, you are lucky nowadays you start cooking early as we didn't because university yeah, were because being cooked for. And also the home. culture yes. so does not allow, does not allow you. Day, yeah. Yeah. And now, for us, mm -hmm. those are the things that start to tell you, hey, if I am here, I must finish quickly and go back home. Really? <laughs> yes, because... But some people yes. right now want to... They always claim that, wow, I just want to leave Kenya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you say when you are in Canada, you realize, I really want to go back to Kenya. Yes, yeah, you would want. In fact, I think three quarter, more than three quarters of us, us wanted to come back home. Mm. First of all, you go in there, assignments are no longer handwritten. Assignments must be done computer, and this is the first time you are coming face to face with the computer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the winters are so unfriendly. Kizungu is so yes. on another level. <laughs> so there are a lot of things that tell you I should finish and go back home. Mm. But of course, people are different. The ones who are saying I want to go, 
some of them may be not having enough experience with the outside world there. So you mm. think out there is extremely good. Few things are good, but other things are bad also. Okay. Yeah. So you finally graduate with your doctorate and yeah. you become a professor. I graduated with my doctorate in mm -hmm. 90, uh, February 92. Mm -hmm. Came back and uh, joined Mo University where I was, I, I was one of the staff members. Worked there briefly and uh, I came back in 93 and I became head of department in 94. Mm -hmm. Then uh, come 96, I was Dean School of Science. Yes. And then uh, come the year 2000, Director of Research for Mo University, the entire university. Mm -hmm. And 2002, I became Deputy Vice Chancellor. Wow. Of more university. Two zero zero two. Two zero zero two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you were moved to Rongo University later. Yes. Two zero zero two. I became deputy vice chancellor. I was there for ten years. Mm -hmm. Then I uh, came to Mo University. I mean, when we were starting Rongo University, I was the deputy vice chancellor. Mm -hmm. Mo University. By that time, the Mo University started campuses like University of Eldoret. Yes. I was in charge of planning, so we're planning to start University of Eldoret. Oh, you are DVC, I FP. was DVC, FP in oh, charge okay. of planning and administration. Mm. And therefore, we planned to have uh, Masindemi Lido. Uh, Masindemi Lido was a little early, but I was already in, 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 in management. Okay. And then uh, we started uh, Masai Mara, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Kabianga. And uh, Karatina University. And then uh, we were asking ourselves, I was asking myself, mm. because at that time I was in planning and we started all the universities elsewhere. Mm. And in the Nyansa zone, there was nothing. Where you come from? And then, of course, we had, we had by that time, Professor Good, mm. Alan Good, Bethel Alan Good was the chancellor. Mm -hmm. I went to Professor Alan Bethel Alan Ogut and asked if it was also possible to start something on the on, on our side, this side. Yes. And uh, he managed to convince the council and the government who were magnanimous and mm. we started Rongo University as a constituent college of uh, Moi. Yes. And I was made the first principal, I mean the acting principal, and then I became principal of this university, yes. and finally was made the vice chancellor. The vice chancellor of Rongo University. So 30. I was there at the beginning, the starting of Rongo University. Yes. Probably, if I was not there, mm -hmm. to look for a place down this way, I don't think we would have one. Forty-two years in university. Forty-two years. All the way. Yeah. What is this that you've realized with university students or in university life? <laughs> Thank you for that question. Mm. I think. Um, what I've seen, I, I don't know much outside because my working entire working life has been in the university. Mm -hmm. And I look, I have seen a lot of things in the university. The students, the staff, looking at the university funding, looking at, so I understand the university very well. Mm -hmm. What I would say is that um, life in a university, if you are a student, has a lot to learn. Yes. You can learn other people's cultures. Mm -hmm. You can learn how people be. Because uh, if your behavior is bad, even if you are bright, you may end up badly. Yes. So you have to choose. You have what opportunity. The university is like a forest. There are so many things in that forest. You have to choose what you think would be good for you. And you must have a vision. As a student, I had a vision of becoming a lecturer in the university, even when I joined in first year. Mm. But we were taught by, by one of the professors, which was extremely good. And I asked myself now, what can prevent me from becoming like this guy? Mm -hmm. And I told myself I must also work to become one of these people. Mm. And uh, a professor Khan that taught us soil science made me change my mind and say, I must work to become like Professor Khan. And uh, I had a vision which, which remained the same. You know, I was working towards it now as a university sure. student. Mm -hmm. As a staff, I think for me to rise to the, to the level of a vice chancellor, as a staff, you must also work well wherever you are. It is not that you will be given anything. I, nobody gave me anything. Mm -hmm. I was promoted because 
I'm working well to whoever has appointed me. So discipline, discipline is paramount. What hard working yes. will 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 you don't need to know anybody in the university to be promoted. I think I see now people imagine that if you know connections, you know the VC, connections <laughs> people are crying about connections, but nobody would promote you to a position you are not you are going to work poorly mm. if he's serious if he's a serious leader. Mm. But if you are working well, he would be looking for you because every leader wants a success. So yes, my sure. advice to students have a vision that you work for, not the vision you say. I want, I want to become a professor, but you are not reading. You are not doing much about that. You will not be one. So You are lying to yourself. You are lying to yourself. Mm. So if you are a student, have a vision. If the vision is to become a professor, then you work towards it. If your vision is to become the best journalist, like I see, Mutiso, you are working towards that. Sure, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then your work, even now, what you have organized, mm. indicates your passion. Mm. And therefore, God will give you what you ask. But if you ask, if you want to be uh, the best journalist, you, you, you are seen in disco throughout. Mm. <laughs> How will you become a good, a good journalist? You can't. So a yes. student must have a focus. Mm -hmm. You must have what you are praying for. God will give you. And the staff must also be saying, I want to become like, if, I, if I'm an admin assistant, I mm. want to become registrar. And then you start working mm. towards that. You just can't become a registrar if, you're, if any little work you are given, you're not even doing that doing so nobody will promote you to reach those levels so education much. is not important yes. we can look at talent we can look at skill yeah. we can do whatever we want but we cannot stay in school that is yeah. the, the 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 culture the millennials are creating yes education is not really important it's not a must i go to school what yeah. what do you think i think you're here all of you is education yeah. i think I, I think i would i would uh, I beg to disagree with that millennial thing. Please thinking. disagree. Because education is not everything for those who are not talented in education. Oh. How would they be? I mean, if, if you're not talented in education for yourself, even if you try anything there, you will still not pass any examination. And therefore, for you, education is not everything. You, but you have got other, your talents which you can explore, you can be the best driver. You can be the best gold miner. You, you can start a business and even become a millionaire. Yes. So in that aspect, I concur. But it is not everything for the people who cannot make it through education. But it doesn't mean if you can't make it through education, you can't make it elsewhere. There's still a lot of field you can make it through. Yes. Yes. Education is not everything <laughs> <laughs> to those who are not talented in education. I remember my director just told me that, uh, Prof, you're having someone to look at, uh, you're supervising uh, a master's uh, a student, yeah. and I think time is moving, and I just want to cut it at here, and you give us a snapshot. Uh, a parting shot to all students who are watching you, all youths in Rongo University and outside Rongo University. The camera is right there. Talk to these students. Hello, my students of Rongo University. Good morning. I just want to tell you that uh, I'm so excited today to address you in this sort of opportunity I've been given. I really want to tell you, being in the university already, you are nearly... Uh, 70 or 80 percent successful oh. what you need now is to concentrate in your studies what you need now is to set a goal what you need now is to focus on that goal and sky is the limit for you my other advice is that look at yourself look at yourself first before you set a goal look at yourself have a meeting with yourself. Say, what exactly do I want to be in future? How do I want to behave between now and that time? Because for now you are in the university, but outside world is different. And therefore it requires a change of mind, a mindset that would be able to allow you to work with everybody anywhere in the world. A mindset that accepts to work away from home. A mindset that allows you to do any job that you have been given to the best of your ability. And if you do that, we'll be proud of you as Rongo University because we will have mentored you to be excellent in academics, to be excellent in behavior, and to be excellent in the work that will come your way, the work that God has prepared for you in future.
I think that's what I would want to tell the students for today. And may God bless you as you undertake your studies. Prof, thank you so much for this time. <laughs> thank you, Tito. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. The fiesta yeah. continues. And this was the grand fiesta. We were talking to Professor Samuel Gudu. It's a wrap.